Welcome to my studio. I'm Eric Scott and this is the Creative Prayer Book. So this is a, a free online workshop that I'm posting on the blog. Um, I mentioned some of it last week in a blog post, so if you haven't read that, you might want to go back and take a look at that. But basically it all started with this little book. Um, so I, I won a free book from Stillman and Byrne and uh, actually I won two of them and this is the smaller of the two. It's a three and a half by five and a half inch landscape format sketchbook. And I got really excited about it and I was kind of trying to figure out what am I gonna do in this tiny book? And I, I for some reason, this idea of, of a prayer book popped in my head. Now I'm not really religious. If you are awesome, great, use this to, to put your uh, favorite prayers in or, or um, you know, whatever you want to do with it. But for me, it, it really became this idea of perhaps like this idea of dreaming or the wishes that I have and really thinking about the creative work that I do. So um, anyway, so I got this little book. I've already started working in it, but I want to kind of show you sort of the format of it. Um, so it's like I said, it's three and a half by five and a half. So when I open it, it becomes three and a half by 11, which is a really interesting format. Um, so like I said, I've already started doing some work in it and I'll, I'll catch you all up. Um, I was just sort of experimenting. I was eager to dive into it. I took some photographs of, of this work, but I didn't do any videos. So um, I've just been basically using three different materials, watercolor, pencil, uh, and newspaper. And uh, so I, I kind of want to show you some of the watercolor uh, painting that I did. Um, so anyway, I've got this little book. It's uh, 150 grams per square meter uh, paper, so it's not super heavy duty. If you don't like something that buckles, you might want to get the, the heavier uh, paper. And Stillman and Burn does make a very heavy duty um, paper, so does Strathmore. Uh, you could do this on separate pieces of paper. You, you could make your own book. There, there really is no limit to it. So um, these are just some of the pages that I've started. And I want to just kind of show you some techniques for watercolor because, you know, even though this is a small book, it still has this sort of expansive space and I want to cover it. I want to do something with it. So I'm using the Ink Tense Paints by Derwent. Um, this goes along with their line of ink tense uh, pencils as well as their ink tense blocks. And it, it's a really interesting paint to use because once it dries, it's more permanent. It doesn't really lift up like watercolor might. Um, but I don't know if you've noticed as I was flipping through this book, I'm trying to kind of make one page relate to another. So there's a lot of color fading and gradation so it goes from yellow over here into more of an orange and pink into red and then we have these red stripes so that when you flip it there's more red stripes so it becomes this visual narrative throughout um, so it, it, i am really trying to think about it in that way that one thing leads to another now this is kind of purple and red but there's a little circle there and then when we flip it it continues over here. Um, so I might come back to these pages later, but I wanna go ahead and start diving into some of these pages that uh, I haven't started yet. So, um, you know, you can kind of look at this like, oh, this is how Eric's getting started with his prayer book. And again, you can use the exact same materials that I do, or you could do your own, but I'm just kind of going through a process. Uh, and, you know, if you wanna kind of try it out yourself, by all means, um, I'm not really thinking about the prayers or the words or the phrases or the quotes or anything like, like that right now. I'm just kind of wanting to take the blankness away. So I have a nice stiff bristle brush. I like that um, instead of a, a watercolor brush, but you know, use whatever you have. Like I said, I have the ink tents. I'm not even going to use the brush that goes that comes with, with it. I've got my water cup down here and uh, let's see, it was blank. So I can just start off with any color that I want. So I really am not too worried about what I'm doing. I'm just going to start maybe scrubbing some paint down, dip it in the water to spread it around, get a little bit more paint. And I'm not even worrying about filling the whole paper. It's okay if I don't. Let's 
All right, so I've got a little bit of yellow. Maybe I want to add a little bit of green to it. And I apologize for the glare from the water, but when it dries, hopefully you'll be able to see it. All right, so that quickly, I've got something going. I'm not too worried about, like I said. Now that's wet, but you know what? For now, I'm just gonna go ahead and flip it over. Um, if you if that really bugs you then by all means dry it or wait for it to dry um, I don't I don't like to wait too much so I really doesn't bother me if the paint transfers I know if I had very different colors maybe it would okay so I have this this it looks kind of yellowish in the video but it's a kind of like a lime green so I think I'm gonna go into more of a phthalo green now and have it transition So you can see how I kind of get a little bit more water, get a little bit more paint and scrub it. I can come back in. Now, that's a little strong there, so I want to rinse out my brush, let it blend in a little bit. Again, I'm not too worried about covering up all of the little white spots, okay? So anyway, now I don't want this, I don't want to close this because this is blue, this is yellow, and it will really mix. So I've got my handy dandy hair dryer so um, that always speeds things up okay so I, I've dried the paper now um, I can go ahead and do some other things so if I flip back some of this you know I just kind of painted stripes on there but here I've done some other things so I actually splattered some paint there um, here I build up some layers I use some plastic wrap um, so it, it's it's okay to go back on top and do some other things here I painted some yellow over top of some green so I think that's what I'm gonna do here okay so I have some paint here what if I get some of this darker green and then maybe take my brush and just kind of pull it back and let it splatter okay so that's just another layer just trying to get some things down like I said I'm not too worried about it being very neat or uh, covering every square inch so take my hair dryer okay so I can continue that um, and I can keep adding watercolor I could do every single page um, I don't like to work that way I don't want to do every page but I do like having a big bulk mass of pages that have been started with the paint and with some other things um, so I do want to go back and maybe add some more things so um, I'm gonna go back to some of the things I've already started so I'll get into some of the collage and some of the drawing um, in a different lesson but today is just more about watercolor so even if you have already done some things in the book awesome and then you can always go back and add to it so I think this could be a good page and you might see over here peeking in I've got a variety of things to use with the watercolor so the first things that I have are plastic canvas and these are some of my favorite things to use with the watercolor paint to create texture um, so feel free to use some of that and I like it because it comes in different shapes um, and it comes in a small things that are portable I also have this little gizmo that I picked up from sort of a, a scrap store like just one of those places that sells a bunch of stuff for people to turn into art and I think it's called the scrap exchange down in North Carolina but it just has a bunch of holes I like that and then I also have this some of you've used this before um, I know it as punchinella uh, and it's actually sequin waste and it creates some really interesting patterns so maybe I'll start off with that and use this now if I want the holes if I want the circles to be more pristine I can use a sponge but I'm gonna go ahead and, and just use my brush and try to get out quite a bit of the water maybe I'll use this phthalo blue and uh, I want to sort of paint but if I just sort of paint real fast over it we'll see what happens usually it will bleed underneath the plastic because this is just plastic 
and it's what they punch the sequins out. So I guess that's why they call it punchinella. <clears throat> Sometimes you can find it as a ribbon at the craft store. And I'm not trying to fill in every single little circle, but just to kind of give a bit of a texture so that when I pick it up, there's just something different happening. And you can see it really bled, but I'm not too worried about that. So again, I can use my hair dryer. Okay, maybe I'll turn it to a different page. Maybe this one now. Um, I think I'm gonna use my circle of the mesh of the plastic canvas. Uh, maybe I'll use that blue again, I like that. And then this time, though, I'm really going to make sure I tap into it because the plastic canvas is pretty thick and I'm using a stiff bristle brush. Actually, the bristles were white at one point, but I've used it so much that they've become stained. Um, a watercolor brush isn't going to be really ideal for this because the stiff bristles really allow me to poke in through the grid. So it really is going to allow me to get into those holes. And just like with the punchinella, I don't want to have a lot of water because it will bleed. And I, I'm not trying to fill in every single, single spot. Just sort of going around and tapping it in different random sections. And then I can pick it up. Maybe I think I need one over here. Okay, so um, anyway, I just want the, this these to be sort of short little lessons. Um, so I didn't go into a lot of depth with a lot of different techniques. This is just about playing around, experimenting with the watercolor, trying to get sort of a background going. Um, I'm not trying to create finished pages yet. And like you, like you can see, I've got quite a bit of uh, things going on in this little book. So um, anyway, you know, so what I would say is over the next week, or if you're doing it today, great, but um, over the next week, just sit down with your little book and, or big book, whichever one, whatever you've decided to work in, and just play around with some of the watercolor. Try to get some color down on the pages. Try to engage that blank space. And, um, and then next week, I'll get into more of the collage and into the drawing. And then I don't know how long this is going to take. I mean, I, I don't know if I'll fill up my entire book. I mean, it, it does have 90 some pages, um, but I, I I do want to fill up a, a good part of it. I don't know how many different techniques. This is something I haven't planned out. So I'm just going to kind of take it week by week. And uh, but next week is going to be focusing on drawing and collage. So for this week, focus on some watercolor, fill up a whole bunch of pages. If you've got a small book, you might fill them all with watercolor, but don't worry about making finished pages. It's just about getting a few things down that's going to help uh, kind of act as a background. So anyway, thank you for joining me this week and I'll see you next week. Happy creating!